everyone, it's that time of week to break down the latest episode of The Bad Batch, which clocks in as S1E5, aka Rampage. Let's get to all those eggs, references, key moments, and even a few cameos. Alright, up first in the eggs and references department is Ord Mantell, which is the planet the Batch heads to to find answers about their new pursuer. This planet was first mentioned in the Son of Dathomir comic book run. While the Batch is being fooled by Sid, you can see a Dejaric table in the back and the Ithorian you see just may be Hammerhead from A New Hope. If anything, he's wearing the same blue getup that his Kenner action figure sported way back when. Alright, so there's a lot to unpack in Sid's office, and I'm sure I'll miss some of the more random items, but she had a few clone trooper helmets, possibly a Mudhorn horn, and possibly a Jedi holocron. She also might have had some hydro spanners laying around as well. And, as our first cameo, she happens to be voiced by Rhea Perlman. Boom. Speaking of which, she drops the are you fresh out of the tube line as a reference to cloning technology. I'm not done yet with Sid's office though, because she also has the proto fet white helmet on display which is a solid ass egg indeed. Sid is a treasure trove because she also mentioned Zygerian slave traders, which were a faction featured in the Clone Wars. Wrecker drops a reference to Quat before they begin their attack on the slavers. This planet has been referenced in multiple Star Wars properties, including the Clone Wars. Echo gets jacked by a Brezik which is a flying monster of sorts that was also featured in, say it with me, The Clone Wars. I love the Bib Fortuna inclusion in this episode, who is voiced by Matthew Wood, who played him in The Mandalorian, and also voiced Grievous in Rots. So, he's a Star Wars pimp. I have more on this guy and his little piggies later in regards to a pretty cool tie-in to the original trilogy though, so stand by. I guess this can count as a reference to Bad Batch itself, but it also has a connection back to Rogue One. But we see that Omega kept the clone doll and has now styled it after the Bad Batch. The shock collars you see the Batch wearing are the same ones the Zygerians used on Obi-Wan, Ahsoka and company when their mission on Kadava went awry in The Clone Wars Season 4. And what do you know? The leader gives us a Kadavo name drop to further reinforce this episode's connection to past Clone Wars narratives, and the Zygerian leader is also voiced by Matthew Wood. Alright, so let's talk Moochie, who could very well be the coolest easter egg reveal to date, mostly thanks to what has to be a direct connection to Return of the Jedi. I think we all have to agree that due to Bib's inclusion via Jabba, that this little girl is none other than the grown ass ranker we see in Return of the Jedi eating Twi'lek babes and pigmen while also trying to take out a force user in Luke Skywalker. With this speculative knowledge in tow, I kinda hate Luke now for killing poor Moochie, but in all honesty, I love this kind of reveal as it just helps to really tie in Bad Batch to the overarching Star Wars narrative while also providing cool little backstories for iconic character or creatures in this case. Two of the captured slaves are Fallines, which is an alien race featured before in Star Wars, most notably via the Black Sun, who were featured in various Clone Wars episodes. But, if you want to go legend style, Prince Zizor was also a Falline. There's another nod to the Clone Wars in its slaver arc when Homeboy pulls out his light whip. And to wrap the eggs and references portion, we get a mention of the Bounty Hunter Guild from Sid. Who else wants to believe her contact is Grief Karga, aka our favorite at SWTS, the Grief Cardboard. And now for the key moments. It may mean nothing down the road, but I found it symbolic that Omega was given Crosshair's comm unit. There's a good chance this is also a bit of foreshadowing, but for now it just shows her becoming more and more a part of the team. Anyone else get the vibe that Omega sensed Sid rather than guessed? I'm still leaning towards this kid having some force juice, so she definitely sensed her out, right? Right? 
At this point, if you haven't picked up on the now obvious Wreckers busted chip foreshadowing, you're drunk. Because we got another direct nod to it. So be prepared for the big guy to go haywire at some point and really put the batch in peril. Not super key, but we did finally get the name of the batch's gonk droid, and it's gonky. I love it. We finally learned where Omega got the bow she wielded in the trailers when we see her pick one up from a fallen Zygerian. This will definitely become her main gear and only takes her one step closer to becoming a fully functional member of Clone Force 99. I know it was mostly comic relief, but how funny was it watching Wrecker and Moochie go at it and then bond as a result of their fisticuffs? I love this big goon, which is only going to make his inevitable malfunctioning chip moment that much more problematic. And to close it out, the Batch learns about Fennec's identity, and we get to learn that she is new to the bounty hunting scene and working on a direct commission from an unknown source. I still believe that source to be Nala Se or Lama Su, but I guess we can go with unknown for now. Make sure to tune into the next episode of the Star Wars Time Show, in which myself and my co-host Nick will fully break down Rampage and give our thoughts on it as a whole. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking it and subbing to our YouTube channel. We'd also love for you to join in with our weekly Star Wars podcast, so use the links in this video's description or head to StarWarsTime.net to subscribe to the platform of your choice. There's always time for Star Wars Time, and remember, if you listen to the Star Wars Time Show, the Force will be with you always.